Miri has advised Israeli prime ministers and worked at the highest levels of military intelligence. She's one of Israel's leading geopolitical and security experts, and she joined us recently in Jerusalem to discuss ISIS, Hamas, and some of Israel's unfriendly neighbors. Take a look. You know, Mary, you've been talking a lot about a very timely topic. You've been doing briefings here in Israel about it, and in the States as well, Syria. Now, the Syrian civil war obviously unfolding at Israel's northern border. What's the latest there? When you look at Syria from the United States, it seems far away. But in Israel, we actually border this chaos. Just across the border from us, on the Syrian side of the Israeli-Syrian border, you have three different conglomerates of forces. The forces who support Bashar al-Assad. I want to remind you, that's Hezbollah, Iran, Shiites, and Russia. They're on the Israeli-Syrian northern border along the slopes of Mount Hermon. In the center, opposite Israel, you have a combination of Syrian al-Qaeda, that they rebranded themselves, but they're Syrian al-Qaeda, right. together with Free Syrian Army. That kind of sounds like the good guys, but I would question that. And on the southern part of the Golan Heights, opposite Israel, is the region of the Islamic State on the Golan Heights. That's just opposite us right now. That's right. Is, is Israeli Golan Heights, obviously, and, and ISIS literally on Israel's doorstep. It's down on the southern side. There are a several different Israeli kibbutzim and moshavim. You remember kibbutz moshav, agricultural communities. Yeah. They go out into their fields. Can you imagine looking across from Israel, from your fields and across the border? You can see the black flags of the Islamic State, the clothes of the Islamic State right yeah. on the border itself. Huge rocket missile arsenal on Israel's northern border. Uh, they're getting invaluable battlefield experience in Syria. Talk about the strength level of Hezbollah right now up north. Eleven years ago, I was the Israeli spokesperson during the Second Lebanon War. That war was Israel against Hezbollah. At that time, we talked about 25,000 rockets. They fired 4,000 against us. Look at what it did then. We're now in 2017. We're talking about 150,000 rockets. Think of how many that would be a day. Much longer ranges that could really hit all over Israel. Israel's a tiny country. We're a tiny country, but there's no question that that arsenal of rockets that they have in Lebanon, and it's definitely aimed against Israel, yeah. they haven't used them in the Syrian civil war, that's where Iran steps in, because yeah. they're not using it. If somebody acts against Iran, Iran's response does not have to be against the United States with an ICBM. They can tell Hezbollah to use that enormous arsenal against Israel. That's right. And here's kind of a nightmare scenario, Miri. I know Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah, the Hezbollah leader, has made noise about the next war up north. We're going to make a ground incursion into northern Israel. Do you think that nightmare scenario is a possibility? Could Hezbollah perhaps try something like that on the ground, not just by air with the rockets, but Eleven years ago, when we fought against Hezbollah, they were fighting defense. And from their point of view, they were victorious. They defended. In the last 11 years, and especially in the last five years, since they've been fighting shoulder to shoulder with Bashar al-Assad forces, they've learned offense. They've learned to attack. They've learned not just to defend. It is most definitely a threat. I want to be clear, Eric. We know this threat. We prepare this threat. I'm not standing here and I am not scared per se, sure. but I need to be prepared. I need to be aware. That's the type of thing that's on our desk right now to understand and what we're supposed to do. Of course. The threats are serious up north, but I can't let you go yet, Miri, without talking about the threat from the south. Um, Hamas and Gaza, last major conflict 2014 with them, is Hamas rearming. We know about the tunnel threat as well. Uh, where are their capabilities right now? When we talk about Hamas, we immediately have to look towards Egypt. Egypt and the Gaza Strip have a common border. Israel isn't on that border. The smuggling, the weapons, overwhelmingly, were coming underneath the Egyptian-Gazan border into the Gaza Strip. That has not been from 2014. That is a huge difference. That being said, inside Sinai, on the Egyptian side, you have extreme Islamic Egyptians. That's ISIS turf. Yeah. That's where they fire rockets into Israel also. Yeah. They have strong connections with Hamas. Yeah. I think that Israel looks very realistically at the threats around us. And one of the things that we try to do is to make you, Eric, and me, all of the people here in and around Jerusalem, that we're safe inside our country, 
terrorism does happen, but we also know how to wake up the next morning and keep on doing our stuff. We look at the borders, we're containing the threats, we're trying as much as possible to arrest and erase the ones that we can. Israel is a safe country, and I feel that we will only become stronger. Sadly, the world around us is not a safe place. Yeah, it's a dangerous neighborhood, and hopefully the U.S.-Israel relationship taking a positive turn as well in the next few Absolutely. years. Yeah, Miri, thank you so much. It was great. A real it was a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. You can find more of Miri's great analysis at MiriEisen.com. Check it out. You know, Israel's enemies like to say that Israel has no rights to the land, that it has no desire for peace. Well, Kufai's David Bragg has just written a fascinating new book that sets the record straight once and for all. You will not want to miss this. Stick around.